Oh boy, today we get to see Officer Casa Donuts struggle. Hi friends, welcome to today's bonus badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I am your host, John Correa. And I'm staring into your soul as his co-host, Mike Willover. Today's video comes to us from Kamek Village, Arkansas. Palm pepper spray has recently reformulated for even more effect when you bless the deserving with the hot sauce. Palm is what I use between a harsh word and a gun and encourage everyone to do likewise. This is a very small village and the chief of police has seen a guy outside his residence and down the street who is moving construction cones and wandering around in the middle of the road and basically creating a disturbance. And he has called into the office and told the officers to wait for backup and take two officers and go and talk to this guy. Our officer on a badge cam has decided not to wait for a second officer. He's gonna make contact. We have audio, here we go. How can I help you? Yeah. Doing good, how can I help you? My name is Okay. My I mean, yeah. What, what can I do for you? Just tell her I put my thumb out. You didn't pull over. Okay. What can I do for you? Are you okay? I'm solid, man. Okay. Yeah. What's what can I do for you, man? Just wanted to chat. I put my thumb out. You didn't respond. So. Oh man, I can't stop in the middle of traffic. I pulled over. I mean, I'm here right now. I mean, it's not really traffic. You know what okay. I mean? Well, I can't park in the middle of the street. I mean, it's not necessary. What can I do for you? You got ID with you, my man? I'm solid. I don't need anything. Okay. What, what you doing out here, my friend? Walking. Okay. Well, was that you that moved the cones over there? No. You sure? Because I was told you did. Why don't you have a seat over here? Let's talk, man. If you don't mind, let's have a seat. I need to see some ID, sir. Come here. Come here. Come don't here, turn that. around, turn around. Don't do that. Turn turn around. Do not do this. Bro, do not do this. You turn don't around. Do this. You turn around. You turn don't the wanna, fuck you around. You don't want to do this, bro. Turn around. Turn around. Stop resisting. You don't want to do this. Can you give me another unit? Brentwood, North McKinley, stop. Stop. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. Just let me go out still on the bench. No. You're under arrest right now. Yes, sir. Put your hands behind your back. Yes, you stop. stop. Tase him, Tosh. Get on the ground. Tase him now, God damn it! I'm trying to get the taser. God damn it, fucker. Josh, can you again? Ah, oh, shit, I shot my fucking self. God damn it, Juby. Shoot me. Damn! Call for help on the radio. Right right Get the fuck off of me, Josh. Fucking rain, fucking broke. What the fuck? You're under arrest. Hit him beat your ass, motherfucker. Josh, get on the get on the radio. Call for help. Broke. Give me your hands up right now. You're under arrest. I didn't do shit. Josh, put a fucking handcuff on. I'm trying to get you. I didn't do shit, motherfucker. Hey! 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 Big old boy, thank you. Huh? Stop. Why are y'all hurting me? Why are y'all hurting me? Fuck your toad. Stop. 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 hurting me. Stop. Help me. Stop. Help. Stop. Help me. Stop. We are trying to fucking help you. No. Stop. Help me! Help! Stop! Sir, help me! No. I didn't do anything wrong! Josh, get on the radio and call for help. We got it on the way. We got it on the way. I swear to God, I didn't. Done something, Settle down, son. I didn't do anything wrong. Settle down, son. Settle down. Settle down. Get on the fucking radio. Can't mention one when you assistance. Yes, sir. 
1033 on the radio, Brentwood, North McKinley. Josh, I got him over. Get over here. Get on the fucking ground. Grab his shoulder. Help! 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 Hold his leg down. No, there isn't. I got him on the radio. They're on the way. We got his legs. We got his legs. I need more people on his way. Help me! Help! Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. You're fine. Hold still, Jesus. Oh. Put my head on it. Save Jesus. Head. Calm down. Save Jesus. Go ahead. Save Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, you ain't gonna walk to the valley. Get back. Get back. I will lie. And you ride and you stand and cover me. I'll die for you, God. You will fucking All right, hold I still. Give up. I give up. I fucking hold still. I'll fucking quit. No, he's not subdued. Where there's three guys holding him down, and he's he's hold hold still. Out, half past, and he's holding him up, and he's holding him by his shirt and his. When are y'all gonna be able, available to be here? Hold still, motherfucker. Stop it. Quick! Get back! Get back! Jesus. <laughs> hold still, motherfucker. Just hold still. Okay, well. Stop! Fucking stop! stop. Hold still, motherfucker. Hold still. Okay. Uh, I know who you are. Not just. The chief and the officer both had minor injuries. They were treated in the hospital and released. Our perp here was also treated and released, and he is being held for multiple charges, including battery and resisting arrest and disorderly conduct. And boy, howdy, do we have a couple of lessons to think about on this one. Holy Moses, if there was ever a video that says that you should get to your empty-handed skills training, Oh boy, this is it. Let's talk about it. Okay, Mike, I, I get it. This one is just a big mess from start to finish. It seems to me that, you know, kind of the initial approach is small town policing. He's trying to just be chill. Okay, man, what do you got? Whatever. But I think that that soft approach in this case didn't work real well. I just want to be clear to the, the viewers that I did try to quit before having to break down this video, but John wouldn't let me. Here we are. So, you know, John, I started riding around in police cars as a police explorer in 1986. So I, I have a lot of time watching other officers do things. And one of the things I've learned over the years is discretion. Discretion as to when you stop someone. Discretion as to whether or not you actually do try to physically detain someone. Is it worth it? Do I have enough backup? There's a million things going on that should be going through his mind like, hey, first of all, he got in a bit of a verbal loop with how can I help you? How can I help you? Try to make a connection with the guy. Your shirt says veteran. Are you a veteran? You know, what, you know, uh, where, where did you serve? What branch of the service were you? Something like that. Anything other than how can I help you over and over again. This guy knows you don't want to help him. Okay, he already knows that. So it's a bit disingenuous. And now when he starts to walk away, it's like, screw you. I don't respect you, yada, yada. Here I go, I'm gonna walk down the street and ignore you because you barely exist. And, and listen, I, I realize there's a little bit of disingenuity here that I am not exactly what you'd call you know, a tiny human. 
neither are you, Mike, but I do think that this officer's appearance is a detriment here, that this guy doesn't respect him and he doesn't think I can, you know, he thinks I can take this guy. I don't have to listen to him because I can beat him up. So, so officers, listen, you have to have a professional demeanor and that means your uniform is very well taken care of. It means that you do some things to help with your physical fitness every day and you try your best to be in shape and, and your demeanor and appearance and professionalism can keep you out of fights like this. Yeah, you know, John, the, the old school use of force continuum, which I'm, I hope they're not using it anymore in, in the way that it was uh, established, but the lowest rung on the use of force continuum is officer presence, meaning just you being there is enough to stop someone from doing something. Um, it, a lot of that is physical fitness, but also just having a uniform squared. Don't have a mustard stain on your tie. You know, don't have half your shirt. Don't have a wrinkled uniform, whatever. If, if, you're, if you're this uh, big and out of shape, and you're an officer or a deputy, you know it, you already know it, and, and you're just rolling the dice hoping that nothing like this happens to you. If you're watching this and you're in this kind of condition, do us all a favor and start to work on it. Start a little bit at a time. Start eating better, start getting, start moving around, getting some exercise because you don't want this to be you. And, and listen, at this point, the guy pulls back from him, he tries to put hands on him, the guy pulls back. We now have a physically resisting suspect. I think a better strategy here, especially given that we know that this officer does not have great empty handed skills, is to back far enough away from the guy, get the taser out and tell him, look, man, you're gonna sit down or, or I'm gonna tase you because you're physically resistant. This was the right time for the taser, not when you're in the middle of a grappling fight. Yeah, you know, we've said before, don't threaten with, you know, with less lethal. Uh, this would have been a case to say, hey, look, man, I don't know what's going on here, but you're making me nervous. I need you to have a seat on the curb or you're gonna get tased or put your hand or whatever you want them to do. I think it would have been appropriate here. Or, or just, well, let me back up. Part of my problem here, John, is what's the actual PC for this stop? He moves some cones around? I mean, at some point we should be deciding if this is a reasonable uh, contact to be having. I know the, the chief told him to stop and wait for backup and communicate with this guy, but going back to the original PC and what's going on, is it even worth it to stop this guy? I mean, now we're dealing with a physically resistant subject. We didn't tase him when we could have, and now this is getting out of control. And here comes chief sandals you know and off duty to come help and he comes in really hard and heavy and if you notice here john this guy starts to comply almost immediately to the chief now watch the slow-mo okay so when he goes to get his taser it's cross draw he can't get to it with his right hand it's not set to a place where he can somewhat because of his size so now he has to go with his left hand get the cuffs out pass them to his right hand and then use his left hand to get a right hand draw taser out and by the time he does that and tries to get it away the guy kicks it out of his hand because he's too close. And so I think the lesson here Dude, is- And look where his eyes are at this moment, yeah, John. On the taser, right? So listen, yeah. officers, hear me. You have to set your gear up in such a way that you can get to it and you can get to it without thinking and without doing this kind of stuff. And that means you've got to suss your stuff out in training and recognize, hey, if I can't get to this with my, you know, where it sits, I got to move it or I got to adjust what my gear is because this kind of stuff could have got somebody killed. Yeah, or I mean, another option if you're this big and can't reach around your own torso, God forbid, is to start training with it uh, non-dominant hand. Use your left hand if you're right-handed to, to draw your taser with. Yeah, get a left-handed taser holster. Great. Yeah, everything about that draw tells me exactly what you said, John. This guy has not practiced. He's not thought this through. He's not, uh, you know, uh, tried drawing his, his taser on, you know, quickly under a time restraint. He, he thought, he honestly thought, I believe he can reach across his torso and get that with his right hand. Well, that was clearly not the case. And the fact that he's having to look down at it is terrible. You should never have to look down at any of your um, offensive, you know, equipment, your baton, your pepper spray, any of that to use it or your cuffs for that matter. The stuff should be so squared away and sussed out, as you said, John, that it's second nature and you can keep your eye on the suspect at all times. And, and now listen, this is escalating again. This guy is purposefully putting his thumbs and trying to gouge the eyes of the chief, okay? So we've escalated some stuff here. Now, I'm not saying the best choice in this particular case is to shoot this guy, but I gotta be honest with you, an escalated use of force is absolutely justified here, and, and maybe a couple of good, solid punches in the face would, would convince this guy that, you know, maybe this isn't worth it. Yeah, again, and I have to, again, I have to go back to what was the reason for the stop in the first place? Why are we here in the first place? Not a great stop to begin with, but now here we are because we decided this was enough reason to detain someone physically because he moved some cones around. Now here we are over the top of the car and he's trying to gouge your eye. Look, an eye gouge could be fatal potentially. You get your thumb back in there far enough to the, to the brain and you're, you're gonna incapacitate someone, which is the last thing you want as a law enforcement officer. A couple of simple closed 
uh, fist strikes to the face, maybe with your baton in your hand for like a roll of quarters for a little extra emphasis, uh, was absolutely what was needed there. And I don't, I don't know why he didn't do it. Maybe his other hand was tied up or something. But here we are on the ground, and the grappling skills here on everyone's part are pretty atrocious. Hear me, officers. Your, your department is probably not going to train you adequately in grounded, empty-handed skills. And, and so I can't tell you enough. You're going to have to invest your own time and your own money to get these skills to know how to work top position, know how to work side control, know how to work bottom position, know how to get somebody in a joint lock to get them to move over where you are. And yes, that probably means you need to go take six months of jujitsu, uh, maybe even a year, but six months to a year of jujitsu will make you a god on the street for the most part and, and might prevent, again, this kind of thing from escalating. I also think, Mike, these private citizens that are here, hey, coordinate with these folks, help out. Let's get this guy turned over. Grab this hand, turn this wrist over, whatever, so that this can end a little bit more quickly. This is why we approach. If you're gonna approach, make sure you ask if they need help and be willing to do so, or get the heck out of the area. Yeah, one or the other. Um, trying to yell at the guy or encourage him to give up is not gonna help. And again, as much as I don't like the reason for the stop in, in the first place, if you are that private citizen and you wanna help out, help get this guy in custody before this, God forbid, turns into a deadly force situation, before this guy grabs a, a taser or a baton and starts swinging it and ends up getting shot. Um, if you're not going to help, if you're not there to help, yelling and screaming or cheering on the cops or whatever is supremely unhelpful. Another thing I want to point out here, John, this chief was, he was operating out of a place of emotion, in my opinion, in this moment. He was pissed off that this guy was, was not paying attention, listening to his commands or whatever. You can hear it in his voice. I'm telling you guys, officers, deputies, hear me when I say this. You can't take this stuff personally. I don't know if they had a background, these two, in their little tiny village or whatever, but somebody disrespects you or doesn't listen to you or whatever, you can't let the emotion get the better. The more emotional you are in a fight like this, the worse it is for you. You gotta stay level, keep your head screwed on straight and just focus on giving clear commands with as few curse words as possible. Just tell them what you want them to do. Uh, raising your voice and F-bombs. I mean, I, I know people think that somehow magically makes a person compliant or that's the only language they understand. Not really. A well-placed F-bomb sprinkled in is great, but this, this chief is pissed off here, John, and it's not helping him do his job. One last thing I will add here. Notice the guy is on his belly now and he's got his neck stuck up. This is a perfect place for a neck restraint. This is why I think a neck restraint should be allowed in law enforcement for law enforcement use. And it has its place, whether it's a lateral vascular neck restraint or something like a jujitsu rear naked choke. When you know how to apply those, you know they're, they're not lethal to healthy people. This guy's clearly a healthy person. He's vigorous and all that stuff. And, and sending him for a quick nap, just a real quick night-night, will you know, get him into cuffs and, and could have ended this very quickly. And, and will not do long-term harm to him. Kids literally do jujitsu chokes every single week on the mats without injuring each other. And, and so you got to know who you can do it to, when to do it, those kinds of things. But, but I think that that means more training, not less training for our police officers. And again, officers... Make sure that you know that you're, you, what your jurisdiction allows, because in most places right now, a neck restraint is not authorized use of force in any capacity. Um, but I think it should be, and I think that they had good reason to use it in a situation like this, and it shows us a good use for that. No, I was going to say, you know, John, um, understand, folks, when John says neck restraint, he's not talking about a knee on the neck. He's not talking about a baton or a flashlight across the neck to constrict the airway. He's talking about a practice neck restraint that will actually put someone to sleep temporarily and not injure them in any way, shape, or form. They will wake up asking what happened, and they'll be in cuffs, and everything will be fine. Officers, if you're watching this... Um, deputies, agents out in the field looking at this sort of thing, you know if this is you. You know if you're the overweight guy. You know if you can't reach your equipment. If you haven't practiced with it, if you haven't been to the range enough, if you haven't been on the treadmill enough, whatever it is, listening to this, watching this, you're like, yeah, that's me right now. Do us all a favor. Do yourself a favor. Get your equipment squared away. Get your health squared away. Get your mental fitness and your, and your spiritual fitness squared away so that you can be on the street proudly representing your community and covering your ASP.